Something sad is that nowadays when you buy a new car, rarely do you get the proper delivery experience. You used to be able to buy a car and someone from the dealership would come sit in it with you and actually show you things on that car that you may not know about. But nowadays, because of people like me and platforms like YouTube, there's so much information out there that when you guys buy cars, you probably know more than the salespeople, so they don't even bother doing it anymore. Which leaves me to a very fun point where every time I get a new car, I'm always trying to find the hidden features. Of course, every car comes with an owner's manual. Some are more boring than others. My Jeeps has pictures. This one kind of sucks, but no one reads those. So while you may be able to find that information in there, we're here to deliver it for you so you don't have to read. So today we have Max, new CX-50. Mac is a family man now. He has a young child. He needed a big boy car. So Mazda platforms are pretty much all the same. So any generation Mazda, it's not like a Chevy where like whatever in my Silverado does not apply to a Chevy Cruze. Correct. I mean, a CX-50, a CX-5, a CX-9, a Mazda 3, they all share the same infotainment. It's all pretty much the yeah, same. Yeah, they're pretty standard cars yeah. so today we're working with the cx-50 but if you guys have any new mazda go ahead and try these because there's a really high chance that these apply to basically all of the mazda lineup so to get started these are in no specific order i actually went ahead and found my own set of hidden features that mac was genuinely surprised about this morning when i showed him uh so we're gonna start with the ones that i found and then we can start with the ones that you found Sounds good. first and foremost is a feature that not every car has but i feel like especially nowadays most cars can do this and i'm gonna call it hidden because you need to click the remote four times dude usually on a new car you go ahead and you unlock and hold it and on the second one the windows drop mazda literally hid this four clicks deep you hit unlock one two three and hold the fourth and you got the auto windows baby the one thing that sucks with that feature is that uh, you can't put them back up. It's probably a safety feature. Like we said, Matt got this car because he has a family now. So uh, you don't want to decapitate the child with the windows going back up. If it's like a really hot day, you can remote start it and get the AC pumping. But if you just go ahead, do the remote start, get the AC pumping and drop the windows, by the time you get out of there, all that hot air is completely gone. When you showed me this morning, I literally went bananas. So number one, windows go down four clicks deep on the remote. Make sure you go outside because you can't put them back up. So the second thing you can do is you can have Apple CarPlay's touchscreen be active all the time. So in the new Mazdas, this big screen is actually a touchscreen. When you're in Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, uh, you can go ahead and like hit back. For some reason, it doesn't do it in the Mazda Connect. These new ones don't really like the, the touchscreen on the Mazda Connect. Point is, you can do that, but once you start driving, it deactivates it. Correct you can't touch it anymore. Correct. But if you go home and then you press on settings, go to connectivity settings, and then go to Bluetooth, and then click your phone. So normally, once you get to this point, your phone's paired, you have no reason to be in this screen anymore. That's probably why you never saw it. Exactly, absolutely. You get your phone paired and you're like, next, what else can I do? Once the phone is actually already paired, you can come back to the screen, and at the bottom it says touch screen in motion for all devices. Go ahead and check it. It gives you a warning, but you can go ahead and use the touchscreen when you're driving now. Which I also didn't know about today. So good job for me. I'm two for two. And uh, the other three plus one bonus one came from Mac. So another one that I found out actually today as well. If you turn on the car, Robbie, so the car's on. Yep. You ever turn off the car and then get out and the infotainment will always just turn off. So now if you go ahead and the car's on and I just hit off, everything turns off. So if you leave your foot on the brake, press the button on the shifter, like this guy? Yep, and then turn off the car. Infotainment stays on. What? Now this will time out after 15 minutes. Yeah, but still, if you're like dropping the wife off or she ran into the store, that's like a perfect situation where you just, you're gonna stay in the car for 10 minutes and whoever you're with is getting out for 10 minutes. Kill it, leave the nav on, listen to your music, right. sit here on your phone. Nice, yeah. that one's cool. I like it. Yeah. So number three, infotainment on when car is off. The rest of these actually take place in the car, which is super nice. Yeah, so number four is taking off the radar cruise control or adaptive cruise control. People don't like the adaptive cruise control or radar cruise control. Which is optionally on or off, but it's not like it used to be where there's like a button on the steering wheel that turns on or off adaptive cruise control. Now it just naturally comes on by itself and people don't like it. Again, if you've been tearing through the settings, you may have already found this setting, but if you haven't yet and you don't like your adaptive cruise control being on from the factory, there is a way to turn off so from the main home screen on the infotainment we're gonna go down to settings go down to safety settings driver assistance and we just click radar cruise control and now that will turn the regular cruise control so if you look down here okay it just looks like a regular cruise control button just yeah. the simple little guy right there just a simple little symbol and before it would have looked like that one with the car beside it so again that one's like pretty not hidden but I think a lot of people, once they tear through the majority of the settings initially, they don't go back in. I, I would 100% agree with that. That one's cool. I like uh, adaptive cruise control. 
I understand why people don't. Yeah, I, especially like where we live in like a metropolitan area, right? Like driving to and from the city can be annoying because people cut on in front of you and it is what it is. Feature five, I know specifically this one applies to all Mazdas. If you guys have ever really played around with your Mazda gas pedal, you'll notice that right there, there's like a little bit of a button. You see how like when you give a gas, it clicks? When it comes to driving, Mazda says that like if you go up to that button and you don't click it, it's better fuel efficiency. When you actually click it, I think it's called kick down mode. As soon as you click that button, it's just like wide open throttle. It's go mode. That's not really a hidden feature in itself. You guys can kind of feel that button and you kind of know what it does, but something cool. Again, I don't know if this is the most exciting for a CX-50, but maybe if you had like a Mazda 3 yeah. or if you had any of the other number of more sporty Mazda cars. All the auto cars have a manual mode. You come down, go over, and you can go up, down, switch gears. It's fun. It makes it a little more sport. But something that Mac, again, I actually think you didn't know this one either. I didn't. That's how I do it. I'm on a good street. Something that you can do is when you're in manual mode and you start accelerating, if you go just to here, your car will hit limiter. And Mac said he's done that before where the car hits red line and it goes, Wah, and it just kind of stays there. If you click this down, it assumes that you're in like a, I gotta go mode and it will override and actually change gears for you. Where this comes in to being handy is if you're trying to do something a little more sporty like a Mazda 3 or something, first thing I pictured was like an autocross event, I don't know why. But if you're doing an autocross in like an auto car, if you mash it, yeah, it's gonna start shifting gears for you. But if you don't mash it, you have full control. So you can get to red line and not shift. You can keep it just at the top of third if you know you're gonna be there for like two seconds, you know what I mean? Instead of having it do the extra gear, as long as you know not to mash it into the click position, you have way more control when you're trying to be sporty and have fun in your Mazda. Number six, just as a bonus, my car doesn't do it. If you're not poor like me and you have the GT, if you have it in reverse and you push the mirror, the mirror will actually tilt down something like this. Oh, look at the actuation on this guy. So that you can see the curb for the side that you're trying to park against. So the actual hidden part is that if you click the right side mirror, the right side mirror will go down. If you click the left side mirror, the left side mirror goes down. Yeah, so by default, I think it does drivers. Correct. And then, but you can go ahead and click this is what he's saying and it'll actually go ahead and change it to the passenger mirror that goes down, which makes sense depending on where you park Correct. in your day-to-day -day life. Correct. And so that is it. That is the five and kind of six bonus hidden features that we found on the new Mazda lineup. I know that there's features out there that we didn't even know or we missed. Uh, we tried some of our own that have worked on different vehicles in the past. Yeah. It seems to not apply to Mazda. Uh, it's mainly applied to American cars for me in the past, but everybody can learn some new hidden features on their vehicles. So drop the comments down below so that we can all learn more hidden features about the Mazdas. Peace out and stay committed. You can have Apple CarPlay's touchscreen be active all the time. In this case, it's Android Auto because you're broken. Yo, shout it. <laughs> <laughs> so in these cars, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is a touchscreen. You can go ahead, poke at whatever you want, but something that happens is once you start driving, that's uh, both of our home oh. addresses. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!